Luke, I am your father. Lo la li lu lu la. What's going on everyone? I'm John from Hobbyist PCs and today why don't we talk a little bit about case airflow. Now keeping your PC components cool doesn't quite just stop at buying a heatsink, slapping it in your case, throwing a few fans in it and then calling it a day. In certain instances it might be preferable perhaps to buy a particular type of case. Nowadays you have many choices for case designs and while many of them look so cool that you'd do anything to get senpai to notice you, a fair amount of them come with the drawback of having poor airflow. If you have any concerns about keeping your components cool, and you should, especially considering that heat is one of the biggest killers of components next to dust, then case airflow should be at the top of your list if you expect to keep your components working optimally over a long period of time. However, the conversation doesn't quite stop there with the case's ability to promote good airflow. The configuration of your fans can also be a heavy influence on airflow efficiency. So today we're going to talk about airflow, we're going to talk about the air pressure inside of a chassis, and then we're going to talk about how the design of a chassis can influence the ability to promote good airflow. All right, let's start off by talking about airflow and its importance. When components are put under load, they start to generate more heat because of the increased voltage required in order to get them to work at full load. When these components are left inside of an enclosed space, that heat starts to build up, starts to stagnate, and then it causes other components around it to get even hotter than they currently are. This is increased even more with the component itself that is generating a lot of the heat. Considering that too much heat can legitimately kill your components, this is obviously not an ideal scenario for anyone. So because of this, good ventilation along with case fans are required to help move the heat, and the better a case is designed to promote good airflow, the better it can move that heat out of the case, and thus keeping your components even cooler. So that's it! Buy a case, slap a bunch of fans inside of it, and call it a day, right? And uh, not quite. I'm afraid there's more to it than that. When placing fans inside of a case, you also need to consider the direction of the airflow, along with the configuration potentially affecting the air pressure inside of the case itself. There are three main types of air pressure that you need to consider. You got positive air pressure, in which there is more air intaking into the case than exhausting. Negative air pressure, where there's less air intaking into the case than there is exhausting from it. And then there's neutral air pressure, which sits right in the middle. You've got an equal amount intaking and an equal amount exhausting. Now, while we take a second to talk about the advantages and the drawbacks of each of these different types of case pressure, positive air pressure tends to result in less dust buildup inside of the case as a result of the air forcing air to move out of all the ventilation holes inside of the case itself. The downside of this unfortunately is that because the air is kind of just moving wherever it feels like it without really being moved out of the case as quickly as it should, this results in what are called hot spots. Because of the crosswinds that happen inside of the case, certain spots within inside of the case itself will have hot spots because the air tends to settle in that one spot as a result of whirlwinds that tend to form. This can be a problem if you have concerns about things like VRM temperatures on your graphics card or your motherboard. So if you have some concerns about hot spots in your case, maybe consider not going with a positive air pressure configuration. Negative air pressure, on the other hand, just completely eliminates the worry of hot spots altogether because the air has no time to circulate inside of the case. The drawback, unfortunately, is that because it's exhausting so fast, it tends to create a vacuum effect, which in turn ends up increasing the amount of dust yeah. that tends to settle inside of the case itself. So while sure you're not getting hot spots, on the downside you're collecting a lot more dust inside of the case and you have to clean it a lot more often. Neutral air pressure on the other hand tends to not really come with the advantages or drawbacks of either of the other two types of air pressure, so it's usually your most balanced option and personally the one that I like to go with most of the time. Now achieving any of these particular types of air pressure inside of your case is as simple as distributing the ratio of intake fans with exhaust fans within your case. More intake than exhaust fans, you get positive air pressure. More exhaust fans than intake fans, you get negative. An equal amount of each, you get neutral. You can even get mathematical about it if you want to go that far. Each fan has its own CFM rating, CFM standing for cubic feet per minute, which is the amount of air it's moving per minute. And you can use that CFM to kind of figure out whether or not your configuration is going to have neutral positive or negative air pressure. It doesn't stop there though, you also might want to consider the directional airflow of the fans inside of the case as well. A lot of cases commonly have mounts in the front, the top, the back, and in some cases they have them in the bottom as well. However, putting these fans wherever you want in whatever direction you want isn't necessarily going to always work in your favor. Having, for example, two intake fans, an exhaust fan, and an intake fan on the side of your case may result in positive air pressure, but the case of having more hot spots is a lot more likely as a result of the wind direction being different at many different spots inside of the case. 
you'll end up with more crosswinds, you'll end up with more hot spots. So as you probably figured, this might not always be the most optimal setup. In most cases, it can be best to have fresh air coming in from the front of the case and then moving out to the back. This allows for air to flow smoothly and across as many of your components inside of your case as possible, so that way you can ensure that your components are getting fresh air. This brings us to the importance of case design for airflow. No two cases are ever designed the exact same, therefore no two cases are alike. This has been brought to light recently with the emergence of closed front panel cases that I'm seeing a lot these days, and one of the best examples I can think of right off of the bat is the NZXT S340 Elite. While it certainly looks cool, unfortunately the front panel design of the case itself only allows for air to move in from the top and bottom of the front panel of the case. Now while this might not be a bad idea for a two 140mm fan configuration in the front of the case, as both fans would be pulling fresh air on the top and the bottom, Unfortunately, the opposite can be said about a 3 120mm fan configuration. This is because only the top and the bottom fans in that configuration are going to be pulling in fresh air, whereas the middle fan won't be pulling in any fresh air because all the air will be moving through the top and bottom fans. This would effectively leave the middle fan almost completely useless. And as I've seen with a lot of the case reviews out there, unfortunately the design of the S340 Elite doesn't leave the best thermal results. A much better example of a closed front panel design that tends to work a little better would be the Corsair Carbide 400C. While yes, it does have a closed front panel design, it does have vents on the sides of the panel itself. This would in turn allow a 3 120mm fan configuration to actually work because your fans would be pulling in air altogether. However, it does have to be said that closed front panel designs do unfortunately create some form of a bottleneck, robbing away some of the efficiency of your fan's ability to actually pull air into the case. If airflow is a big concern for you, then you might want to consider getting a mesh front panel design. Mesh front panels tend to allow a lot more air to flow through it, therefore it's one of the best ways to go about getting your fans to work as efficiently as they possibly can. This was made abundantly clear to me once I picked up a Fractal Mesh of 5C which has a mesh front panel on the front. My temperatures inside of my previous case which had a closed front design were somewhere in the vicinity of 78 degrees Celsius on the graphics card. I'm just going to use that as an example. Once I swapped to the Fractal Mesh of 5C which has a mesh front panel, I noticed a decrease in temperatures as low as 64 degrees Celsius and never getting much higher than that. At that point, it was made clear to me that I'm probably just going to stick with mesh front design from here on out. Of course, the limitations don't stop there. Depending on the price point and the design of the case, you may be subject to more or less limitation in terms of quantity of fans along with where you can place them. A lot of budget cases, for example, tend to only accommodate one intake fan and many exhaust fans in the case. And in some instances, there aren't even any placements for intake fans. So you have to keep that in mind if your main concern here is getting good temperatures on your components. Don't just go out and buy any case that you see just because it has an attractive price. Take a moment to look into it, see what the airflow looks like, and buy the exact case that fits your needs perfectly. And that just about wraps up the discussion, guys. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please be sure to like, share, and comment down below. Why don't you guys tell me about what sort of case pressure you prefer to have in your case, and tell me about your situations in terms of figuring that out. Also, down below, there'll be links to the various social media pages. I'm pretty active on Twitter, and I also have a link to a Hobbyist PCs community Discord as well. Feel free to join. I'd love to have you join in on the discussion. There's also a link to my Twitch page down below. I stream twice a week, and it's a great opportunity for you guys to get in and talk to me live. Be sure to also check down below for a link to our merch page as I have coffee mugs and t-shirts available and I'm looking into possibly expanding the store a little more. And of course, if you want to be notified anytime we update on the channel, please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications. You'll be notified anytime we update to the channel. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I hope you guys have a pleasant day.